Hey guys, it's DC here. Today I'm talking with Ricky Burke, who is the InfoSec recruiter. Um, he is a recruiter in Melbourne, but I'll let him introduce himself. Ricky, how's it going, mate? Really well. Um, yeah, even though I'm in Melbourne, uh, capital of COVID at one point, um, yeah. but life, life is good. Yeah, at least the weather there is, um, well, at the moment, consistently nice and cool compared to here where it's like yesterday it was 30... 35 or 36 degrees and then today it was like 18 so it's it's sort of all over the place but um, we're not here yeah. to talk about the weather let's let's talk no. about um cyber security so just a little bit about yourself first um what sort of projects are you involved in and, and give us a, a rundown of of yourself i hate this stuff um <laughs> so i i run a cyber security recruitment company based out of melbourne but we support companies across australia and, and sometimes new zealand yeah. Um, pretty active in the security community. Um, so attending conferences, presenting at conferences. I'm very fortunate. I've spoken at a number of B-Sides events, like B-Sides Canberra, Perth a couple of times and nice. run workshops at B-Sides Melbourne. Um, Pre-COVID days, um, I ran, I think I still run a meetup called All Sec in Melbourne. Um, I have a podcast myself, um, Hacking into Security. Uh, so we've did about 30 episodes, 31 episodes last year, um, talking to different people about getting into the industry, uh, which seems to have got some good traction. Nice. Um, and in the meantime, yeah, actually then f helping companies fill jobs in this space. Cool. Okay. That's, yeah, that's, that's quite a lot of um, projects you've got going on there. Um, it must keep you very busy, I think, as, as you sort of get through each one, especially the meetups, they tend to um they tend to take up a fair chunk of time i found but um yeah anyway let's uh let's get on to the questions i've got uh six questions here that i'd like to get through um that were questions i asked in my discord server uh from people who are wondering about the cybersecurity industry specifically in australia so who better to talk to uh than yourself so the first question is uh the international visa sponsorship employment opportunities so what what sort of uh opportunities are there um at the moment and maybe in the future for uh international students who come to study in australia and then move on to um hoping to get a job is is there much of an opportunity there or let's go over that how 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 honest can i be as honest as you like as honest as possible okay. please all right and i apologize if my language gets a bit salty um i know yeah, where this is going uh, I'm, I'm just talking in general because i i do swear a lot um all right so basically it's extremely difficult um i think the government don't do a great job of this um, a lot of people come or wanting visas and end up in locations where they can't even get jobs yeah. um it is extremely tough for students. Yeah. So you, you get students that end up on uh, visas where they can only work a certain amount of hours per fortnight, maybe 20 or something. Um, or you get people that come over, that do a master's and then they're available for a job. But there was a guy I spoke to even last week and I put him forward for a pen testing role and he's... He doesn't have PR. He's got a, a certain time frame, and he he hopes that he qualifies for enough points to then get the invitation to then um, qualify for PR. Right. And a, the company still wouldn't um, basically interview him. Wow. Um, for, fortunately, he is interviewing with another one of our customers this week, um, but it's very sort of selective, and a lot of companies won't sponsor um so there's there's hardly any sponsorship it was tough pre-covid yeah. it's a lot harder post-covid because there's, there's so much uncertainty That's so right. even though we've we've got a customer that is actually sponsoring people and they've um they hired one guy for us last year and he was in europe and he finally made it um either end of this year, last year or the very beginning of this year yeah it took him about eight eight nine months to wow. eventually get over um, and fortunately, they let him work remotely. So the, the guy, you know, this was just beginning of COVID when things didn't look that complicated. And 
They offered him the job. He accepted. He resigned. Normal thing is then he was going to take a short trip and then come over and then COVID. Right. Um, fortunately for him, they, they let him work remote um, all that time. So he wasn't out of a job. Wow. But he, he could have quite easily been out of a job. So it's, it's pretty stressful. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think people have to be really careful with, with just sponsorship in general because I've seen it where people get sort of regional sponsorship um, visas. And because, you know, people sometimes might be desperate and they just want to grab any opportunity they can. And if you know they can get sponsorship for Australia, fantastic. But the problem is if that sponsorship takes them to a place where there's no jobs and they, they can only work in that region, they're, they're stuffed. Yeah, exactly. um, you know, there's so, cybersecurity roles post COVID tend to, to only be around the cities um, or nearby. There weren't really many remote roles, um, but I think anyone trying to land their first gig, whether it's the first gig in a new country or whether it's them being a student and then looking for their first role, but getting a uh, remote role is, is pretty difficult. Right. Um, for those of you wondering, PR is permanent residency. Um, yeah. And I'm a little bit surprised, especially with the um, sort of influx of remote roles available um I, I guess it does it still comes down to that eligibility of uh having a pr um or citizenship um which i see a lot of <clears throat> places yeah. now, especially well obviously government uh, is looking for citizens and clearance but um yeah it's it's a bit tricky for those international students who are then wanting to get a job off the back it's it's always been hard and i think like you said it's it's just as hard if not harder now <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, because of that. But I really feel sorry for them, to be honest, because it's it's so tough, and and that's students in general. So even you know, talking about someone who's born and bred in Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney, wherever, yeah, um, it's still really difficult for them um, because a lot of companies working remote for COVID or even long term, I think, are a bit more reluctant to take on junior people because it's easier to hire someone who can walk into a role and do it from day one as opposed to trying to train someone up who hasn't got any commercial experience that's it. Yeah. and that's part of the whole issue with around the industry and the, the, the skill shortage stuff that it's not at the um entry level it's it's at the sort of more senior end that's it yeah it, do, that, it does really suck but um yeah that's it's okay there are opportunities in other um parts of the world for sure where um, either in your home countries as well, um, there is opportunities there um, to look forward to. It's not to, impossible. So. I th not impossible. I, th I think it's just good to be aware, though, how, how tough it can be. But people still make it. So you've just got to be bloody good and <laughs> have some relationships. Um, you know, network is massive. You know, knowing people or having people that know you and, and being known for being good at something um, is, yeah. is, is really important. So... On, on the sort of sponsorship stuff. So it, that's the other thing. It's still not, you know, it's still not impossible. Um, and it's a really difficult one, but there are some companies that will still sponsor people, but no offense intended, but you have to be really good. Um, yeah. And you and have to have certain things that you can point at that sort of demonstrate that. So whether it's present presentations at conferences, like known things like DEF CON or Black Hat, um, or maybe you've worked at some prestigious companies. So, you know, if there was someone working in the US and they've been at Facebook or Google or Amazon doing some interesting stuff, yeah. then they might be, um, you know, pretty interesting for some tech companies over here. Sure. Um, but someone who's got some sort of skills that aren't stand out, that, you know, there's a lot of those around, it's, it's a lot harder for them, unfortunately, to get sponsorship.